It's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, good to have our uh, visitors with us. And uh, all right, then, I'm gonna say, Steve, I'm gonna call you out. You, you messed me up on uh, um, what, what the uh, what the ones uh, one day. Uh, and we really need to go through and change chorus to refrain to keep us from seeing the, the chorus. Okay, sorry. This is old song leader humor. I know what you're thinking. Very little. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, but uh, I, just uh, one, one quick commercial before we begin. Uh, just this afternoon, uh, I would love uh, to, to, to take this uh, big old group of people and uh, transplant them into uh, Commerce, Georgia uh, to go visit with folks at Harmony Road. If you have a chance to, to go and worship this afternoon at 2, please do. Uh, I just uh, <laughs> talking with a couple of them. Uh, you know, I told them that they might have, a, have, have some visitors in there. They're very excited about that. So, uh, it, in spite of me telling them that I was coming. Um, so, I would love to have everybody there. So, if you could, please please come. And uh, it'll be uh, good for them. But also, it'll be good for you as well. I promise. We are uh, talking about a, a topic this morning. Um, I hope it's not lost on you. Uh, that, they, they probably, uh, these, these points uh, hopefully are going to remind us of some things, I hope. Uh, we're going to talk about, as we uh, read, about uh, you know, this uh, idea of losing Jesus and, uh, of course, looking at uh, what just happened or what we just read. Uh, you know, Jesus is going to the temple, all right, and, and here he is, a, a Jewish boy, according to custom, that you know, become a man at the temple. <coughs> I, you know, I think that's, that's funny because I know folks a lot older than that so uh, probably uh, shouldn't consider men. But, uh, that, you know, again, uh, customary for them to, to, you know, reach manhood at, at 12. And so uh, he becomes a son of the law. And so then, all right, so at that point, uh, you know, it's not just your mom and dad that are, are going to make sure you're, you're following after the law. You have some responsibility as well. And one of those things is, is, is making those trips to the temple. And this wasn't his first one, but uh, he called a ride the first time. Of course, it was a, a little uh, baby uh, as he went to the, the first time. But here he is. This is his first trip as uh, you know a, a son of the law or you know as, as a man, uh, keeping the commandments of, of going to worship at the temple specifically at certain times. And, uh, and, and they uh, go and, and fulfill their obligation there. They, they go worship. They, they go do all they... And, and it's time to go. And uh, they're, they're traveling back. Of course, we, we sit there and they're, they're in a group. And uh, Mary and Joseph are, you know, thinking, uh, you know, I don't know if Mary thought Joseph had him, Joseph thought uh, Mary had him. Or then, of course, we sit there. They're looking in family and friends and acquaintances. You know, Jesus is somewhere in the group because we're all just, uh, just going back. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, uh, Kevin, home alone. Uh, you know, just all right. So everybody else is doing other things, and, and there, you know, all of a sudden there's a kid left at the house. This was uh, a different house uh, that he was left at. But they are traveling on, and again, go go a day's journey. And so I, I just, you know, just imagine this big group of people going, and then uh, finally figure out. Um, Okay, he's not with you. He's not with you. He's not. I mean, we just maybe we just met these folks and we liked them, but they, he's not with it. All right, we've lost our son, and uh, so they, uh, you know, of course, go back to look for him. And uh, some of you, if, if you'd uh, like to go home and, and check it out, you can read uh, this particular comment from Wayne Jackson in the uh, New Testament commentary. And uh, he says, at the end of the first day's travel, they searched for their son but could not locate him. Hence, they returned to Jerusalem seeking for him. The Greek participle indicates a sustained, fretful search. Hey, their parents that lost a kid. Right? I, I think uh, we don't even need the Greek to figure that part out, right? Uh, finally, they found him in the temple compound, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Moreover, he was amazing those who assessed his understanding and the answers he supplied to questions. And so again, they lost him, and then they found him. And it's just again, um, he wasn't uh, you know hanging out on the streets. Uh, you know who, who knows what uh, thoughts were going through Mary's head about where he's going to see. You know, in some alleyway, lost. He's just roaming the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, you know, asking for who knows what was going through her mind. 
but they found him there in the temple. And of course, uh, I just, you know, not that I've ever lost a kid, but uh, when Missy lost a kid, <coughs> you, you know how that is, right? You, you, you find, you know, let's say a store or something like that. And of course, the kids think it's absolutely hilarious, so I did anyway. Hiding under the, the clothes and all that, and, you know, mom's frantically calling and that type of thing. So we have that uh, typical, uh, hey, we found you, uh, that uh, happy frustration. I said, are you okay? You're not hurt. Are you hungry? Is it, it's okay. Everything's good? You're in so much trouble. <laughs> Again, happy frustration. Um, but we look at uh, how uh, this conversation goes. Uh, Mary's having this conversation. You know, your father and I have been looking for you. And, and again, frantically searching for you. It's just three days. And we finally found you. And uh, we see again, verse number 48, 49. The son, why have you treated us? So hold your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said, then why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? <coughs> See, they didn't have a capital and, and lowercase letters as they, because they don't have the little word clouds up above their head as they're saying this. But I'm pretty sure they got the idea of what he was saying because, well, of course, they knew where he was sitting. And they could see what he was doing. Pretty interesting story. Uh, a 12-year-old. Um, a young man who realized I need to be doing something and uh, was doing it. And so this is about it for, uh, for Jesus and his uh, childhood. So did we get this particular story just because, hey, well, you know, they're going to want to know something about the childhood of Jesus, so let's go in something. And th this was a you know, pretty major incident because, uh, you know, his parents were panicking. Or was this given to us for a particular reason, maybe a, uh, maybe a lesson that we can get? Well, we'll say yes. It's a, it's a story uh, we talked about this morning in class, um, a, a, a uh, collection of facts. Uh, this is sometimes when we say story, that just you know, means that uh, something made up just for our entertainment. Well, this happened. But I think we can also learn from what happened here. And so this morning, uh, let's, let's look at an analogy here between this idea of what would happen then and what's happening uh, in the world, maybe happened to us in the past in a spiritual way. Because we look at uh, Mary and, and Joseph, and well, they started off the trip very well. They had their son with them. Uh, Jesus was with them. Uh, verse 41 and 42, again, of uh, Luke chapter 2, his parents went to Jerusalem every year, the feast of the Passover, when he was 12 years old. They went up according to custom. They left the house with him. They made it all the way there. And uh, they, they made it to Jerusalem doing what they were going to do. And so, again, it, it started off very well. And the same way with us, um, coming out of the waters of baptism, we have Christ with us. And we have uh, Christ in salvation, and, and again, the creator of the entire universe, he, he's on our side. Uh, 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, the Lord's not slow to fulfill his promise, and some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any of perish. Under repentance. He has patience with us, long suffering. Again, while we have time here on earth, whether it's our time or the entire universe's time, while we have that time, he is wanting us to live the way we are supposed to live. And he doesn't just, oh, you messed up, zap. He wants to give us time to repent. He wants to give us time to change. He wants to give us time to live the way he wants us to live. And he provides some help along with it. We see Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 28, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So we, we understand that you know, maybe, you, maybe all of us have uh, been farmers. Or have um, you know hitched up our oxen and you know and, and tilled up the ground so that we can can grow our vegetables. But uh, I think we get the you know general concept. Maybe we've seen pictures. 
for the longest time, again, probably when I was 12, it was supposed to be a man. I you knew this idea of a yolk uh, was, was uh, <coughs> weird because what do eggs have to do with, uh, with, with this idea of burdens? But that's actually spelled differently. <coughs> But this idea of uh, a yoke is you, you put the again this uh, you know uh, this wood on the ox. You, you're gonna sit there and you, it's your your steering mechanism so that you can uh, get those rows in a, in a straight line. And Jesus is saying the world offers a yoke. It may feel like fun and excitement. It may be sold as something that everybody wants and everybody has. If you don't have it, you better get it. But we know that also includes uh, the add-on of sin. And this is a heavy, heavy burden. And so heavy that you can't carry it into heaven. Jesus offers something else. We have him in salvation. His yoke. Again, it's not throw off the yoke of the world and then you're free to do whatever you want to because Jesus has paid the price. It's it throw off the yoke of the world and put on mine. Yes, I am going to, to guide you. I am going to help you steer the path so that you are on the right one. You can't go to the left or right if, if you'll just follow what I'm wanting you to do. And it's a choice we get to make. But this yoke is so light, we're able to carry it into heaven with us. We have him with us. Ephesians 1 and verse 3 where all spiritual blessings are found in Christ. Freedom from sin, the hope of heaven, uh, a beautiful family that we get to be with, uh, an opportunity to worship Him and for hear Him to, to hear us as we talk in the Creator, the entire universe, who has an open ear for His family. We have all of that and more in Christ. We can have Him here again. I mean, we think of of heaven, and, and we're going to be there with Him for, for all eternity. But he, he said we can, we can have that relationship with him now as far as being uh, in that family of God with him. Uh, Revelation 3 and verse 1, it, as uh, John's writing uh, what uh, the Lord wants him to, to the, the church there in Sardis, uh, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you're dead. Wake up. And strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you have received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. <laughs> Yet you still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not stole their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed us in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father, before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We are being watched, judged, graded as a congregation. And so here we have uh, this uh, the church there in Sardis. Listen, there are some that are heading down the wrong path. But there are those that are not heading down that wrong path that are walking with Him. We want to be like those. Walking with Him every day. Because Jesus promised His disciples then, and of course uh, that, that goes for us now, uh, at the end of uh, the book of Matthew, you see in, in chapter 28, that He is going to be with them uh, even to the end of the world. He is going to be with us, even to the end of the world. And again, whether that's the end of the world, an end of time, or the end of our time, we can have Christ even then. We see in uh, Psalm 23, again, uh, as we look at, you know, uh, Yea, go walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. As we go through the shadow of death, again, whether that's uh, us and we see death around us, Maybe death of our, our loved ones or our family or friends and we see and we remember our time here is not going to go on forever. He can be with us to remind us we're going to live on and on. Or even if it is our particular time to go, as we are ending this life, He promises to be with us. And again, looking at that end of time, again, 
uh, of Paul telling the church in uh, Thessalonica, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 15, For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive and who are left at the coming of the Lord will not proceed to those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Encourage one another with when time runs out, whether we're alive or dead. Jesus is with us. He has promised we're going to be okay. He is either going to, uh, again, awake us out of the grave, or we're going to be changed to be able to, to meet him in the air. But he is on our side. He is with us. And then looking back at Mary and Joseph at their assumption. As they were leaving Jerusalem, well, they thought they had Christ with them. But verse 43 is when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind the door. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. Reminds me of, uh, of Samson uh, when he finally uh, told Delilah the secret to his strength, and she uh, called in her favorite barber and uh, trimmed his uh, trimmed his hair. As she woke him up, hey, they're here, they're attacking. He didn't know his strength had left, and so he went on uh, business as usual, thinking, well, let's whoop up on them again until he figured it out. And they helped let him know that he wasn't a strong Samson again. Here we are, just Mary and Joseph just going right along. Okay, let's let's go. And die. Jesus is with the group. Let's uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna all head out. The, the family is leaving. But just because they assumed he was there, just because they they thought Jesus was in the group, <coughs> of course, it didn't mean that he was. <coughs> They made a mistake. But we look at it, and did that mean they didn't love Jesus because they you know, assumed he was there with them? Or they, they didn't care for him anymore? Of course, we can see they, they do care for him, and they did care for him. They went back and looked for him. Uh, the story would have gone a whole lot differently. But said, well, he's not here. Let's keep going. Uh, did, did it mean that they were uh, dishonest? Or they, they weren't sincere about being the parents of Jesus. And again, of course, just, just supposing something, or just thinking, or even even the really, really, really meaningful thinking. I really want this to mean this. It doesn't make it right. And they went an entire day's journey away from Jerusalem <clears throat> until they realized. We're missing something. We're missing someone. And Jesus isn't here with us. And so we look at uh, sometimes members of the church uh, have gone a, a day's journey without Jesus. Sometimes they've, uh, they've left the pathway laid out. They, they put down the yoke that uh, he was offering and took up the yoke of the world and didn't realize uh, you know, what he's left us. <clears throat> He's no longer with me. Some have uh, gone after the pleasures of the world. We see in uh, Mark chapter 4, we're looking at the parable of the souls. Uh, uh, verse number 7, the uh, other seed fell among thorns, and a thorn tree grew and choked it, and it yielded no grain. <clears throat> in verses 18 and 19, he goes on to explain what, what that means as, you know, since this is a parable. Others are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches and the desires for other things enter in, choke the word and it proves unfruitful. Other things come up and get in the way of heading in the right direction. Again, the world enters and Jesus exits. First John 2 and verse 15 Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
For all that's in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, pride of life, is not from the Father, but it's from the world. The world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Even though, again, even though we know, I mean, we've, we've read the book, we, we've, uh, we've, we've been to class, we've listened to lessons, we, we've studied, we understand how bad the world is. And the fact that the world is, is not going to be here forever. Uh, you know, there, there's other people in the world that is just, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, and they can do whatever they want to, because once they uh, live their life, they're like Rover, they're dead all over. And I'm just going to enjoy as much as I can while I'm still alive. We know different. Yeah. And sometimes we try to get in as much as we can and still be okay. And again, just because we suppose we're okay, just because we think we're okay, doesn't make it right. You know, those, uh, you know, again, going after the pleasures of the world, after the works of the flesh, we see in Galatians 5, uh, 19, uh, this uh, list of the works of the flesh. <clears throat> again, some of them, of the world says, hey, that's, uh, that's not a good thing. Don't be doing that. And other things, the world says, well, you know, that's just life. You're more human beings. And uh, so sometimes, you know, we, we, we do things. But it's okay because, uh, you know, everybody's human. Paul being inspired by God says, here's a list, not a complete list, but here's a list of some things that we don't need to be doing. And again, this reminder, who is he writing to? The churches of Galatia. He was writing to Christians saying, hey, don't do this. I wonder why he would need to do that. Because sometimes we do. Sometimes we move away and follow after the world. And when we do, again, we don't have Jesus with us. He is not going to encourage us to move into the ways of the world. Some have uh, found this teaching unbearable. I don't really like that part of the Bible. I, I wish uh, that there was a lesson on that. Uh, why, why are you know, they preaching at me? Um, that's nothing new. Uh, from the very beginning, God has said some things that uh, man has not agreed with. But when man does something about it and goes against God, from the very beginning, we see bad things are happening. And so, again, as a reminder to us, if we will follow after him, things are going to go well for us. But some don't like to hear certain things. You know, we see in John chapter 6, Jesus said, that, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. Hey, stay with me. I, I've got this, uh, this uh, spiritual food. I've got the bread and the water of life. Do as I say and everything's going to be great. And then we see in verse number 66, after this, many of the disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. They didn't want to follow after what he was saying, no matter what. His teaching became unbearable. And there are those who, again, shop for places to go and worship, places to go and be a part of a particular family. Let's see what they teach on this particular subject. If, if they agree with me on this and I can say doing what I'm doing, then everything's going to be okay. I'm going to stay with them. Instead of, do they follow after the scriptures? And I need to make sure that I do as well. Some have left over uh, the work to do. Uh, we see in Matthew chapter 25 again, as we are facing judgment, it's our, we're on, our, our life is laid out. It's our, here's, here's what I'm looking for. The type of people that uh, are going to be welcomed into heaven. Those who <laughs> feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome strangers, clothe the naked, visit the sick, visit prisoners. Those who are doing the work of the church. And some, listen, I'd rather just kind of sit here, uh, sing some songs, 
uh, worship God, and I'll see you next week uh, so we can do the same thing. If we aren't doing as God wants us to do, we don't have Christ with us. And unfortunately, some people don't know. And that is why we must continue to dig into God's Word. We must attend Bible classes to make sure that we are learning as much as we can. We must study on our own to make sure that we are, are grasping everything we need because our eternal destination depends on us knowing what's in this book and applying it. Because we know what sin does. It separates us from God. It separates us from, from Christ. We say in Isaiah 59, again, this idea, you know, sin, our, our iniquities that separate us from God so that he doesn't hear us anymore. Uh, not that he can't, but he won't. He's holy that we have sin, we're not. <coughs> Acts chapter 8, again, is uh, Simon is trying to buy the power to be able to pass on the, these, uh, these gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Peter lets him know that, that he is, you know, his, his choices, his sin has separated him from God. And he is in a really, really bad place and needs to get out of it. Of course, we know uh, not just the church, but some of our religious friends have gone a day's journey. And, and of course, some have gone an entire lifetime uh, without Jesus. Um, some have gone uh, following after a particular uh, religion. Uh, because, uh, hey, I feel really good about this, and I know that Jesus wants me to be happy doing what I, and I, and I feel happy about doing this. And so no matter which way I go, uh, you know, we're all getting to heaven, we're just taking different roads. That, and I haven't found that anywhere in the scriptures. That's just uh, an old wives tale. Again, if I can use something for class this morning. We see in 2 John 9, though, uh, everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. But we don't have Christ if we're not following after his way. I don't know if he could have said it any later. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. After chapter uh, 15, we see verse uh, 7, you hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. We can teach something, we can do something that looks very religious -y ish and is completely and totally wrong. God's not going to congratulate us on how religious our services look. He is looking for people to worship Him in the spirit and in truth. You see in Colossians 2 and verse 20, again, stay away from the things that the world is offering. We have one head of the church who has laid out exactly how worship is to go, the work is to go, Christians are to live. Are we following after that? If so, we have Christ. If we're following after somebody else who is offering us something, that sounds good, but is in error. we got to remember that in error. Paul. Some have taken, uh, you know, just a sit-down approach to it. And, you know, just someone will sit back uh, and enjoy the, uh, uh, the ride along through life <clears throat> because uh, Jesus has paid it all. He has done everything. I can't do anything for my salvation. I'm just going to sit back. I can do anything, uh, you know, live my life the way I want. I need to be uh, you know, a, a good person and all, but, but Jesus has taken care of all the admission fees to get into heaven, so I can't do anything. And yet we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 40, as uh, Peter is described to these people that have just been convicted of uh, murdering the Son of God. Save yourselves from this crooked generation. It sure does sound like we have decisions to make and actions to take. We cannot be passive in our salvation or else we're not going to have Christ with us. Romans chapter 6, Paul talked about it in the churches there in Rome that you know, we have a choice to make. We can follow after uh, the, these, uh, you know, the spiritual things. We can, we can uh, make ourselves slaves to God or we can make ourselves slaves to the world. We're going to be one or the other. If we just choose ourselves and, and try to play Switzerland, 
And, and I'm just going to be neutral. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm looking out for me. I'm just going to going to kick back and relax. We have not chosen God, so we've lost Christ. <clears throat> and of course, some have left because they won't take a stand. Some who know the truth. Whether they grew up in the church and, and left, or maybe they've been a part of another religious group for all this time and they see error after error after error, but I'm comfortable here. My family's here. My friend's here. I've always known here. If I, if I go somewhere else, I've got to learn new people and, 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 and a new way of doing things. I, I know they're wrong doing this and this and this, but uh, you know, overall, they're really good people. So instead of taking a stand for the Word of God, they just sit back and say, well, it, it'll all work out in the end anyway. That idea that <coughs> as long as I'm religious, that I'm, that I'm okay. They don't have Jesus. And unfortunately, sometimes, again, people in this situation don't know they don't have Jesus. Which makes it very important for us to be willing to have conversations with them to point them to the scripture so they can see for themselves and decide for themselves, I need to get Jesus. I need to find him. And of course, Mary and Joseph, as they were looking for Jesus, uh, they found him where they left him. Uh, verse 45, uh, when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. <coughs> Excuse me. After three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the teachers listening to them and asking them questions. And so we look at, uh, we've got the, the four words there on your sheet, uh, or a place for them. Uh, the first one, a realization. They realize, hey, we don't have our son. Uh, they searched. Uh, they, they, they looked where they thought he was supposed to be. And he wasn't there. They realized we don't have him. And so, of course, uh, that needs to happen in our lives as well. As we are searching and, and thinking, assuming that you know, we have Christ with us, if we read through the scriptures and figure out, hey, I, you know, we don't have him, we need to realize we don't have him. We don't need to go through life blindly. So that idea of constantly testing ourselves and uh, making sure that we are matching up with the scriptures is vital to us as Christians. Then they had resolution. We've lost Jesus. We're resolved we'll find him. And they're good parents, right? Uh, that, you know, uh, losing children is, you know, and, you know, uh, leaving them off somewhere, you know, that okay, we're not gonna, we're not gonna get the, uh, you know, mom of the year cup. I don't know if they had those back then. But probably something similar. So we're not gonna get that if we don't find it. Right. So we're gonna go find. But they love Jesus. They wanted to go find to make sure he was okay. And so they resolved, we're, we're going no matter what. Uh, just because they were a day's journey, and again, what like let's hop in the car and go back. Uh, whether it was a walk back, whether it was a, a ride back on their favorite camel, whatever it was, they were going back, and they were going to find Jesus. And so, again, once people find out, hey, oh, we don't have Christ. I am not in Christ. I am, um, you know, going my own way, not the way of the Scriptures. We need to resolve to go back to the old paths and make sure we're going back to the scriptures to find out where is he? I need to find him. And be determined, just as Mary and Joseph were. Um, how long did they search? Three days. They didn't give up. All right, you know, we're going to find him. So, I mean, so they go a day's journey, and then they have to do a day's journey back. And then they spend that uh, day, you know, looking and looking, and, and, and so they go to, uh, to to find that they don't, you know, distance, time, that didn't matter. They were determined to go find her. And again, are we determined, no matter the effort, no matter what we have to change in our life, no matter who we have to move away from, no matter what we have to move away from, no matter what we have to change in our life, are we determined to make sure that we have Jesus in our life? And then they had, of course, that perseverance. They stayed with it again that three days where they were searching and searching and, and, and making their way back to find him. And so uh, we too need to have that perseverance to search for the truth until the truth is found. 
and then do something to find it. And again, for those searching for Christ, again, out all these other places, uh, just as Mary and Joseph did, of course, where, where do we have him last? Let's start there. Uh, they went back to Jerusalem to find Jesus. Well, just like uh, Mary and Joseph did, we also have to do the same thing. We have to go back to Jerusalem to find Jesus. And this may be a little small. Uh, there are a few charts here and there that you can find on the Internet, or I can uh, share with you. But uh, there are a lot of places that people are looking that, uh, well, didn't start out in Jerusalem like uh, the church did. Just like the church was prophesied, it would start in Jerusalem. And there are um, all kinds of religions. Maybe it was a particular person that wanted to start it. Maybe it was a particular theme that they were trying to follow. Maybe it was a, a group of people and they decided, hey, we're going to go ahead and start this religion. And if the church or part of did not start in Jerusalem, and we can't go back to Acts chapter 2, it's how we're going to be just like the church is supposed to be in the New Testament. The one that started there in Jerusalem, just as God had prophesied it would, that we need to change. We find Jesus, uh, and then we also find the plan of salvation. Uh, again, as we see in Acts chapter 2, Peter talking to the people in, uh, in Jerusalem there about what they needed to do once they were convicted of, uh, of the sin of, of murdering the Son of God. And uh, then we find the, the church where we find Jesus. Uh, Paul describes it uh, as uh, the uh, household of God, the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. We are finding Jesus, uh, we are finding his church as well, because the church centers us in Christ. Because that is the one that he said he was going to build. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. This was a promise he made and a promise he kept. And he built us. And we need to make sure we remember that uh, this idea of, oh yeah, he promised he was going to build his church. As if it was something that's uh, out there that uh, we can go see. Well, it is. We can look around the room here and see us. He was building us. We are the church of Christ. The church that belongs to Christ. And so when we find Jesus, we also find his church. And, of course, we know in Acts 2, verse 47, we're reminded this is where the saved are at uh, Paul told the church in Ephesus, we are reconciled to God in one body. We are brought together, we are brought to God, presented to God. One body, one group. It's the church. And so if we are leaving out the church, we're leaving out Christ. And we need to make sure we are continually seeking God's righteousness, seeking His kingdom, First Matthew 6, 33. That includes seeking out his bride. Will be built the church. If we are trying to make it into heaven without the church, and just trying to hold on to this idea of Christ, we're missing out. And we will miss out. We need him. And he can be found here studying together growing together, working together, doing what he wants us to do together, part of the church. We need him, and we can find him. Of course, we need him because he has the words of life. Just as disciples, are you going to lean to, so where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. <coughs> we need his teaching. We need his example so that we can go and live in heaven for all eternity. Of course, he's the one that can save us. And uh, he is the one that laid down his life for us so that we can be saved. He is the one that gives us eternal life. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We are looking forward to that home in heaven. And again, it's in Christ we have that home in eternal life. So the question or a statement this morning, if you aren't in Christ now, you need to be looking. If you aren't in Christ now, how are you looking? See, the, the good news is you're in the right place if you are because you're <coughs> in 
have questions about the Bible. We have Bible answers. Not just, uh, here's what I think about it, here's uh, you know, what I've always heard, uh, or uh, here's what uh, you know we can scram around and find on the internet. Let's go to the scriptures and find out what the Bible says about salvation, about heaven, about the life of a Christian, about whatever it is that you're searching for. We'd be happy to help. If there's something that we can do to help you obey the gospel for the first time, learning who Jesus is and uh, what he's done for us, being willing to uh, to believe in him as the son of God and because of that belief change our life to, to match up his will and then uh, enter into the, the, the waters of baptism, have our sins washed away, we would love to help with that. If you have done that in the past and fallen away and need help coming back, need uh, the uh, prayers of the church, need an encouragement to, uh, to come back to make the decision to, to live in Christ again, Anything that you need, please let us know. We now stand the same.